today's session mainly focuses on critical points. Before moving on into that topic, first let's have a recap on what we did in the earlier sections in the as video lectures. We had mentioned about increasing decreasing tests, how to identify whether a function is increasing or decreasing at a particular point. There is a test called increasing decreasing test and it says that if f dash of x0 is strictly greater than 0, f is increasing at x0. If f dash of x0 is strictly less than 0, f is decreasing at x0. And if f dash of x0 is equal to 0, we cannot apply the test. That is, the test is inconclusive. We cannot conclude anything. So, uh, if we have the first two conditions, we can uh, conclude that at first uh, f is increasing at x0 or uh, f is decreasing at x0 respectively. So, uh, you can view the example given here which we had already discussed before the function is moving like a wave kind of wave and at the point x1 here the corresponding uh, behavior of the function is it is moving up that means it is increasing at x1 that means f dash of x1 is strictly greater than 0 by increasing and decreasing test Similarly, at x2, you can see that the function is behaving to move down. That means f dash of x2 will be strictly less than 0. At x3 and x4, you can see that the function is not increasing or decreasing. See, That means we cannot conclude uh, about the test and that is uh, num point number 3 which says that at f dash of x3 and f uh, at x3 and x4 when we calculate f dash we get f dash of x3 is equal to f dash of x4 is equal to 0 and at x5 here x5 also you can uh, look here here uh, at this point you are shown a line like this that means here the function is not increasing or decreasing uh, so you have to please note that uh, there the function uh, since it is not increasing or decreasing uh, the test will give f dash of x5 is equal to 0 and at x6 you can see again it is like this there is a line drawn here see there is a line drawn here like this a line drawn here a line drawn here, a line drawn here. That means at those points, uh, the derivative as at those points will be 0. That is f dash of x3 is equal to 0, f dash of x4 is equal to 0, f dash of x5 is equal to 0, and f dash of x6 is equal to 0. So that's how we conclude that function. Now example 4 uh, asks us uh, to check whether the given function is increasing or decreasing at x is equal to minus 2 and also another function is given and we have to check whether it is increasing or decreasing at s is equal to 2. For the a part we are given uh, the function f of x is equal to x raised to 5 minus x cube minus f uh, 2x square find the corresponding derivative f dash of x is equal to 5x raised to 4 minus 3x square minus 4x. Then uh, we have we are given the point at x is equal to minus 2. So substitute for x is equal to minus 2 in the derivative and uh, when you evaluate you get finally uh, the value to be 76 which is a strictly positive quantity which means that f is increasing at x is equal to minus 2 by the increasing and decreasing test. Now the b part gives us uh, g of s is equal to root of s square minus s. By applying chain rule you get g dash of s is equal to 1 by 2 root s square minus s into the derivative of s square minus s which is 2s minus 1. Now we are asked to uh, find the behavior at s is equal to 2. So uh, put the value s is equal to 2 for g dash you get g dash of 2 when you evaluate it to be equal to 3 by 2 root 2 which is a strictly positive quantity which is strictly greater than 0 that means g is increasing at x is equal to 2 uh, by the increasing and decreasing test. Now example 5 gives us 
the function f of x is equal to x cube minus x square plus x plus 3. So f dash of x is equal to 3x square minus 2x plus 1. Okay. We have to find the behavior at x is equal to minus 1. So find f dash of minus 1. When you evaluate, you get it to be equal to 6, which is strictly positive quantity, strictly greater than 0. That means f is increasing at x is equal to minus 1. So as a remark uh, in the next paragraph, you can uh, see that suppose if f of t is the distance moved at a time t by a particle. So the derivative of f dash of t with respect to t will be nothing but the velocity in a particular direction. And we can uh, think that uh, if f dash of t or at a particular point t not is strictly greater than 0, we can say that the velocity is moving to the right direction. And if f dash of t not is strictly less than 0, we can say that the velocity will have the less left direction. Note that velocity uh, is uh, a vector quantity, right? Uh, it has the magnitude as well as direction. So, the direction can be uh, made defined like this uh, when we calculate f dash of t and uh, if it is strictly less than 0 and greater than 0. So here uh, as an explanation you can see here positive velocity means that the motion is to the right and negative velocity will mean that the motion is to the left. So that's how the figure is shown here. F dash of t not strictly greater than 0 will imply positive direction to the right and F dash of t not strictly less than 0 will mean uh, negative direction that is to the left. Now let's see example 6. Example 6 asks us to uh, before that we are given uh, something which says that the temperature at time t is given to be the function f of t is equal to t plus 1 divided by t minus 1 for t strictly less than 0, uh, t strictly less than 1. So we are asked whether it is getting warmer or colder at t is equal to 0. So that means if f dash of uh, 0 is strictly greater than 0, so we say that it is warmer and if it is strictly less than 0, we say it is colder like the positive and negative velocity. So given f of t is equal to t plus 1 by t minus 1, right? So f dash of t by quotient rule that is equal to t minus 1 into derivative of t plus 1 which is 1 minus t plus 1 into derivative of t minus 1 which is 1 divided by t minus 1 the whole, rate, whole square. And when you evaluate, you can cancel this my t and minus t, you get minus 2 divided by t minus 1 the whole square. Okay. Now calculate f dash of 0, you get minus 2 divided by 0 minus 1 the whole square, which is minus 2, and that is strictly less than 0. So we said that if it is increasing, we will say it is hotter. If it is decreasing, we will say it is colder. So here uh, we are asked whether it is getting warmer or colder. So what we conclude is it is uh, getting colder because f dash of 0 is strictly less than 0. And then you have a definition uh, which we had already mentioned that if, a fun if we have x1 greater than or equal to x2, uh, that will imply f of x1 greater than or equal to f of x2. If this is the condition, then we say that the function is increasing. Similarly, if x1 is, or, or you can uh, give strict inequalities there uh, to avoid confusions. That is, uh, yes, uh, this will mean uh, this is strictly greater than f of x2. Similarly, if x1 is strictly greater than x2, that is implying, if it is implying f of x1 is strictly less than f of x2, that will mean that the function is decreasing. So, this uh, conclusion is given the inside this box. Suppose if f is a function defined on an interval i and uh, whenever x1 strictly less than x2, will imply f of x1 uh, strictly less than f of x2 that will mean f is increasing on i 
and uh, similarly if, uh, if when x1 is strictly less than x2 the sign changes for f of x1 and f of x2 that will mean the function is decreasing on that interval so you have uh, example 7 example 7 which is asking us uh, on what intervals is the function f of x is equal to x cube minus 2x plus 6 increasing or decreasing. So let's solve this example. So we are given uh, f of x is equal to x cube minus 2x plus 6. So calculate f dash of x is equal to uh, that will mean uh, that is equal to 3x square minus 2. Suppose if f dash of x is strictly greater than 0 we have to find whether where uh, it is strictly greater than 0. For that, assume f dash of x is strictly greater than 0. That will mean 3x square minus 2 is strictly greater than 0. That is 3x square is strictly greater than 2. That is x square is strictly greater than 2 by 3. That is x square minus 2 by 3 is strictly greater than 0. So here you have, uh, there is a slight variation there. Mm, yes, that will be a plus b into a minus b, right? So here, here you get, um, yes. That will be x plus uh, root 2 by 3 into x minus root 2 by 3, okay. Because x square minus a square will be x plus a into x minus a. The same thing. Okay. That is strictly greater than 0. So here you have uh, two possibilities. That is uh, the product of two numbers is strictly greater than 0 means you have two possibilities. One is both the numbers are strictly greater than 0 or both the numbers are strictly less than 0. So you have these conditions. First condition is x plus root 2 by 3 is strictly greater than 0 as well as x minus root 2 by 3 is strictly greater than 0 or x plus root 2 by 3 is strictly less than 0 and x minus root 2 by 3 is strictly less than 0. The first condition will imply x is strictly greater than minus root 2 by 3 and x is strictly greater than root 2 by 3. To conclude both these, the intersection of that uh, you will have that to be equal to, uh, that to be equal to x strictly greater than root 2 by 3 intersection of this right this is lesser quantity than this so uh, in total you can get uh, this is the conclusion here and for the second part you have x strictly less than minus uh, root 2 by 3 and x strictly less than root 2 by 3 so uh, as an intersection, you get x strictly less than minus root 2 by 3. So you have x strictly greater than root 2 by 3 or x strictly less than uh, minus root 2 by 3. And to conclude, we can say that f is increasing. We assume that f is increasing here. f is increasing in root 2 by 3 comma infinity, right? Here it said that it is greater than square root of root 2 by 3, uh, 2 by 3. So that will mean this. Or uh, you have f is increasing inside the interval minus infinity comma minus root 2 by 3. So that's for the increasing part. Now we are assuming f dash of x is strictly less than 0. That will mean 3x square minus 2 is strictly less than 0. And the same way you end up with x plus root 2 by 3 and x minus root 2 by 3 is strictly less than 0. So two numbers when they multiply it is uh, strictly less than 0 means either one of them will be negative and the other will be positive. So if the first one is strictly less than 0 the second one will be strictly greater than 0 so, or if the first one is strictly greater than 0 then the second one should be strictly less than 0. When you solve it out you get The conclusion here uh, x is strictly less than minus uh, root 2 by 3 and x is strictly greater than root 2 by 3 or x strictly greater than minus 2 root uh, minus 2 by 3 and x strictly less than 
2 by 3 and when you conclude both of them, both of them are giving the notion that minus root 2 by 3 strictly less than x strictly less than root 2 by 3 that is f is decreasing inside the interval minus root 2 by 3 comma root 2 by 3. So that's how uh, you get the answer for example 7 and here there is an illustration of that. Uh, see uh, the points are plotted uh, minus root 2 by 3 and root 2 by 3 okay uh, so uh, we are uh, we had said that and this is the corresponding point for the functions uh, corresponding value uh, function value uh, and uh, we said that the function uh, is increasing right uh, increasing in my, uh, root 2 by 3 comma infinity and similarly minus infinity comma minus root 2 by 3 so uh, till root minus root 2 by 3 the function is increasing right here and then uh, in this interval in this interval we said that the function is decreasing that is in the interval minus uh, root 2 by 3 comma root 2 by 3 and then after that uh, you said that the function is increasing right so this is kind of an illustration for the uh, example which we now mentioned and example 8 us asks us to match the functions on the left hand with its derivative on the right hand column so we have to apply some logic to get this um, solved so the first question is uh, first function given f is given like this okay so uh, we know that at 0 the function is decreasing and uh, to the left and uh, increasing to the right so I am just calling f dash of 0 minus in the sense to the left of 0 uh, the function will be strictly less than 0 and to the right of 0 the function will be strictly greater than 0 so let's see uh, which all are functions which satisfy this so the first uh, a here we know that the function is uh, strictly less than 0 to the left and uh, the function is strictly greater than 0 to the right and uh, also when uh, we check out uh, you know that c here the function below 0 right that is negative and function to the right of 0 is positive so you can have either one uh, a or c for one but uh, since uh, the derivative uh, here for the a part is constant for x strictly uh, strictly less than zero that means uh, this this part the corresponding derivative if if we choose a that will be uh, a constant so that is not possible because uh, this is not uh, f of x is equal to x right uh, this is one uh, this is minus one and one uh, so it is not possible so we can choose uh, c so one is going to c one is going to c uh, then uh, you are looking at two so here the function is increasing if this is minus 1 this is minus 1 this is 0 this is 1 then uh, you know that uh, the function is increasing at minus 1 uh, and at 0 the function is decreasing and increasing right and at 1 the function is decreasing uh, so 2 can be mapped to b I am telling you because you know that here the function is increasing that means the derivative should be positive see here the derivative is positive above minus 1 and uh, the function is decreasing and increasing uh, and that and, and this part and this part and this part are uh, correspondingly the part here and then here the function is decreasing that means it should have negative value the derivative that means uh, 
टू कैन बी मैप टू बी नाउ फॉर थ्री हियर द फंक्शन इज डिक्रीजिंग दैट मीन्स वी नीड अ फंक्शन विच इज डिक्रीजिंग हियर विच इज लेस दैन जीरो and here the function is increasing so you need a function to the right which is uh, having positive value so you have uh, when you observe you can see that e is the corresponding function which can be mapped to 3 uh, because uh, here the function is having negative value here and the positive value here corresponding to the observations we made now and for four uh, we can map it to a why because here the function is decreasing so it should have negative value and it is you you know that it is minus x and this is x so when you take the derivative you get uh, minus 1 and 1 minus 1 in this side and 1 to the right side so you have four is mapped to a and then when you observe you get 5 can be mapped to d why because here the function is increasing then again increasing so uh, that means here the function is all positive above zero right so you can map 5 to d so uh, please uh, observe the function and try to understand what we just discussed now uh, and uh, you can clarify if you are not getting the point okay and then we move on to the definition called local minimum point okay so local minimum point of f if if a point x not uh, is called a local minimum point for f if there is an open interval a b around x not such that f of x is greater than or equal to f of x not for all x in a b uh, this is an important definition uh, and uh, in this illustration you can understand what is a local min a local minimum is similarly a local maximum point is a point x not uh, a point x not is called a local maximum point if there exists an open interval a b around x not such that f of x is less than or equal to f of x not for every x in open interval a b so here see this point if we are taking this point you can find this is zero right you can find an interval here such that if you take any point that point will be greater than this that is this point is uh, lesser than any functional point here so that means this point will be a local maximum similarly if we take the point this one here so if you take a interval here we know that this point will be a local maximum and here this point will be a local minimum because we can find an open interval ab such that in that in that interval the all other functional values will be greater than this point so this point is a local minimum and in this example this point will be a local maximum and this point will be a local minimum okay so let's see example 9 in example 9 we are asked uh, whether uh, the x not in each of the graphs is a local uh, minimum a local maximum or neither so here uh, x not if we take any point any uh, interval uh, which contains x not we know that this point there exists points which are greater than this point and also there exists points which are lesser than this point so it is not a local maximum also it is not a local minimum but this point you can see that it is a local maximum this point will be a local minimum but this point is neither a local maximum nor a local minimum so that's how we arrive at the conclusions for example 9 and next goes the main definition of today's session 
which uh, is nothing but critical points of a function. Critical points of a function f are the points x0 where the derivative at x0 is equal to 0. Derivative of f at x0 is equal to 0 or f dash of x0 is equal to 0. It is a very simple definition. And also there is a test, critical point test, which says that if x0 is a local maximum or minimum point of a differentiable function, then x0 will be a critical point. That is f dash of x0 is equal to 0. Earlier we had seen that uh, about we had mentioned about the increasing and decreasing tests right of a function so for that we had point number three which said that f dash of x naught is equal to zero, then we cannot conclude about the test. That is whether the function is decreasing at x naught or decreasing at x naught. We cannot conclude, right? So here we are saying that f dash of if f dash of x naught is equal to zero, then we call this x naught to be the critical point. And we are saying that if the function is a local minimum or local maximum, the point will be a critical point that is observation we are just given with after defining the critical point right see if x naught is a local maximum or local minimum point of a differentiable function then x naught is a critical point that is f dash of x naught is equal to zero that is uh, when we repeat the same after okay so as an illustration uh, you can see this see here this is x naught this point is x naught we know that to the left of x naught this part that is we are uh, thinking about the open interval a x naught here we know that the function is increasing okay and to the right of x naught you know that the function is increasing so in total we can say that f is increasing at x naught right now look at this uh, figure here x naught to the left of x naught we know that what's happening the function is decreasing right and to the right of x naught again the function is decreasing that means in total we can say that f is decreasing at x naught okay. that is an observation we get from the two figures and also there are another pro another possibilities see if this is x naught if we are taking the left side here the function is decreasing. If you are taking the right side, here the function is increasing. So decreasing, increasing. That means x0 is the local minimum point. Okay. Here to the left, we know the function is increasing and to the right, the function is decreasing. That means this point x0 is a local maximum point. Okay. From this figures and from the logic we just obtained we are going to summarize the first derivative test it is also an important test like the increasing and decreasing test it says that suppose x0 is a critical point for f of x that is uh, by the definition of a critical point, we know that f dash of x naught is equal to 0. Now, if f dash of x changes sign from negative to positive, then we say that x naught is a local minimum point for f. That is, we said f dash is going negative and then increasing. So, this point will be a local minimum. And similarly, for the second one, when f dash is increasing and then decreasing. So, this is our f. So, then that will become a 
local maximum. Now, if f dash is negative, okay, when it is moving down, the function is moving down, and again the function is moving down, then we say that this point, the function is decreasing at this point. Similarly, if a function is uh, the derivative is positive at x0 and again positive. That means the function is increasing. Here the function is decreasing. So this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So uh, we are also uh, given the first derivative test uh, in the form of uh, signs. See, if f dash of x to the left is negative, negative to positive, then it is a local minimum, positive to negative, then it is a local maximum, negative to negative, it is a decreasing function, positive to positive, it is an increasing function. So that's how we end up with the first derivative test and we are going to solve some examples related to it. Find the critical points of the function f of x is equal to 3x raised to 4 minus 8x cubed plus 6x square minus 1. Are they the local maximum or minimum points? So first of all to calculate critical points assume f dash of x is equal to 0 and find x. So if we are taking uh, f dash of x uh, then you have 12x cubed minus 24x square plus 12x then simplifying you get uh, at the end 12x into x minus 1 the whole square. So we have assumed f dash of x is equal to 0 that means 12x into x minus 1 the whole square is equal to 0. That means either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. So these are the critical points. We have to check whether they are local maximum or local minimum. So think about the points to the left of 0, okay, I am just calling it f dash of 0 minus, okay. When uh, we are taking values to the left of 0, we know that they are negative numbers and you know that this x minus 1, the whole square will always be positive because it is a square. So if x is strictly, if, if we are taking points to the left of 0, uh, you know that this function will be strictly less than 0. If you are taking points uh, to the right x points to the right of 0, they will be positive numbers. So in total f dash of x or f dash uh, of 0 plus will be strictly greater than 0. That is negative to positive. So you have 0 to be a local minimum at x is equal to 0. Critical point test says like that. Now if we take uh, points to the left of 1, then you have it is strictly greater than 0 like points, uh, just think about points which are um, in between 0 and 1, okay. So they are strictly greater than 0, not taking 0. Uh, and also uh, if you take uh, points after 1, f dash of 1 plus will be strictly greater than 0. That means uh, the function is increasing at x is equal to 1 by the critical point test. So that's how we end up example 10. Now you can see example 11 which gives us the function f of x is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared minus 6x. We are asked to uh, find the critical points and classify them. Okay, for that we are going to find them. Uh, for that as uh, we find f dash of x which is nothing but uh, 3x squared plus 6x minus 6. Uh, Equate it to 0, you get 3x squared plus 6x minus 6 is equal to 0. You can divide the whole, equa uh, whole equation by 3, you get x squared plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Whenever you have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, you can find x by using the formula minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a. Here a is equal to a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2 and c is equal to minus 2. Substitute them in the equation and finally you are going to get minus 1 plus or minus root 3 by 2. Okay. Now suppose f dash of x is strictly greater than 0. So you have f dash to be equal to uh, 
strictly greater than zero. Uh, so you have uh, uh, simplified it as x square plus two x minus two that is strictly greater than zero, uh, and you just got the roots, right? So if we have a and b to be the roots, you can write the same quadratic equation as x minus a into x minus b. Right. So that's what we are going to do. You have a to be equal to minus 1 plus root 3 by 2, b to be equal to minus 1 minus root 3 by 2. So that is here you have a equal to minus 1 plus root 3 by 2, b to be equal to minus 1 minus root 3 by 2. So you just substitute for that uh, x minus a into x minus b is strictly greater than 0. Two product of two numbers is strictly greater than 0 implies both of them to be z, both of them should be 0 or both of them should be uh, both of them should be strictly greater than 0 or both of them should be strictly less than 0. Then solve for uh, simplification of the same when you take both of them together you get the simplification like this when you take both of them together you get a simplification like this and the intersection will be the one which are drawn in psych in the circles so you can conclude from there that uh, f is increasing because we have assumed f dash of x is strictly greater than zero so you uh, you end up with this uh, criteria for x so we can say that f is increasing in minus 1 plus root 3 by 2 infinity in the interval and minus infinity comma minus 1 minus root 3 by 2. So that's uh, f dash of x is strictly greater than 0. Now f dash of x is strictly less than 0. The same manner uh, you have the product to be strictly less than 0 should mean that one of them should be positive and the other should be negative. So the logic applies here and you can uh, look for the simplification and at the end you are getting that x should be inside because of the uh, intersections you get uh, x, x should be inside minus 1 minus root 3 by 2 and minus 1 plus root 3 by 2 that is f decreases inside the interval open interval minus 1 minus root 3 by 2 comma minus 1 plus root 3 by 2 so that is how you uh, solve for the example 11. Now, example 12 asks us to discuss the critical points of y is equal to x raised to 4 and y is equal to minus x raised to 4. You can see in the figure or you can plot them. Uh, you can plot them in your notebooks y equal to x raised to 4 and y is equal to minus x raised to 4 and uh, it looks like this and this simultaneously. Uh, you have to find the critical point. So, uh, when f of x is equal to x raised to 4, you know f dash of x is equal to 4x cube. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 4x cube equal equated to 0 will imply that x is equal to 0. So, x is equal to 0 is a critical point of the function x raised to 4. Uh, and uh, from the figure of x cube you can also draw x cube x cube always changes sign from negative to positive when it is uh, the, when the derivative changing from negative to positive by the critical point test you can conclude that the function is having a local minimum at x raise at x is equal to 0 Similarly, for minus x raised to 4, four the critical point is x is equal to 0. Here, the derivative will change from positive to negative. That means by the critical point test, we get that the point x is equal to 0 is a local maximum point. So, here you can see from the figure that this point is a local minimum and this point is a local maximum. So that's uh, all for this section. Uh, and you have to uh, write down all the lecture notes uh, in this section, complete them. And then you have to solve for question number 5, 6, 7, 8, 
नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व एंड टेन यू कैन सॉल्व एग्जाम एक्सरसाइज ट्वेंटी वन ओके ट्वेंटी वन विच इज नथिंग बट दिस वन ओके दिस इज क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी वन क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी वन मैच द फंक्शन एज वी हैड डिस्कस्ड इन द लेक्चर मैच दिस फंक्शन एंड You can also solve twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Okay. Okay. There are so many questions. You can work on them uh, upon your interest, but. Uh, you have to work out the problems we mentioned now uh, they are mandatory and uh, submit uh, you have to submit them as assignment works so thank you for watching and please be very careful about how you understand the topic critical points local minima local maxima and uh, the test uh, the increasing and decreasing test as well as the critical point test so thank you for watching out uh, see you in the next video lecture uh, and do complete the lecture notes and the problems which are assigned to you thank you